Welcome to Sleeping with Sarah. I'm Sarah Albritton, a narcoleptic comedian, and this is a podcast where I interview people in my bed and we talk about sleep, comedy, relationships, and more. I'm happy to be part of the Laugh Factory Podcast Network. For my 36th episode, I interviewed actor, improviser, and comedian Gregory Holloman. You might know Greg from Strangers with Candy. We talked about meditation, improv, scuba diving, sleeping based on how you live your life, traveling, and his new show, Shrink, which will be on CISO. You can follow Greg on Twitter at Gregory Holloman. Also, his website, GregoryHolloman.com. This week, you can catch me on November 17th at the Laugh Factory in Chicago at 8 p.m. Sleeping with Sarah is brought to you by Audible.com. Go to audibletrial.com slash sleepingwithsarah to get a free audiobook of your choice. This week, I'd like to recommend I Like You, Hospitality Under the Influence by Amy Sedaris. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash sleepingwithsarah. Please remember to rate and review on iTunes and iHeartRadio and follow me on Twitter at Sarah Albritton. Well, let's get started with the show. Welcome to Sleeping with Sarah. I'm Sarah Albritton. Oh, and I'm Greg Holloman. <laughs> How did you sleep last night, Greg? Oh, man. I slept well. I slept well. You know, I'm, uh, I'm in town, so I'm at a lot of different houses, and I wound up staying here longer than I had first professor. <laughs> because you're filming you're filming a show right now. Huh? I'm filming, yeah. Yeah, two. Actually, yeah. Uh, two shows. I didn't know that. Well, one show. One and show. One movie. Oh, Oh, cool. I didn't know about the movie. What's yeah. the movie? <laughs> Movie's called Chance. Ooh. Uh, it's about this, about this, uh, it's a true story of this guy who, um, he's a black man with blue eyes. And there's a certain, certain section of Dick of the Caribbean called Cape Verdeen or something. Oh. Where a lot of the, back in the day when they were slaves, the slave masters, uh, got busy and, and produced these blue-eyed black kids. And oh. so, yeah, it's a pretty interesting story, so check it out when it comes out. That's really cool. Yeah. And um, and then you're filming Shrink, which Shrink. I Shrink. That's, that's, I love that concept, man. It's, that sounds so cool. It's, it's, a, it's a perfect, it's stupid funny, which I love. Yeah. Which, well, stupid funny is great. Like, I think any kind of funny is great, but I love the... No, ridi- stupid funny. I love ridiculous. Like, yeah. you know, like with the Stranger of the Candy, how that no, was. No, stupid funny. Yeah. Oh, man, I remember discovering that. Oh, I was, it was a, a friend in college turned me on to that, and I was like, oh, this is so cool, and we just, like, binge-watched. In bed? <laughs> Not in bed, but... Um, but I remember um, that was just a really cool thing to discover. Yeah. How do you get involved with that? What? Stranger the Candy. Yeah, go down that road again. Uh, we don't uh, have to if you don't want to. No, man. no, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, well, I had worked with uh, Paul Donello, who played uh, Jelly Neck, and Stephen mm-hmm. Gobert, and Amy. We toured together when we were at Second City, and so when they left Second City, they they wrote this uh, character, and they and every time they got to the Blackman character, which I played Principal Blackman, they realized they were doing my voice. They were doing me. So I said, let's get Greg Holland for this. So, uh, so they called my house. And at the time, I was taking care of my mom at the time, who was since passed on. And uh, it was looking for me. And they're like, uh, oh, Mr. Holland, is Gregory there? No, baby, he's not here. Who, who's calling? Uh, this is Stephen Colbert. We want to fly him out to New York, have him test for his TV show. Okay, well, baby, I'll take a message, <laughs> and I show what tell him you call. So she read the message. So she had Alzheimer's. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, and then, you know, it's a progressive disease. And, you know, but she was always able to take messages and give them to me. So she, take you know, takes this message, puts it down, goes around the house, do, does something, come back to an hour later. Stephen Colbert. I don't know no Stephen Colbert. <laughs> Goes, oh no! Oh my gosh! I get home. I was doing a movie at this time. I was like, "Hey, mom, get any message? Nigga, had I got some messages, I would have told you. Always get okay. <laughs> I'm just asking. Anyway, finally, found me to go up. Oh wow, man, that's crazy. Back in the day when people were like writing messages and all that. It's a bit that. What? Well, I feel like it, no. In the last like 
What? <laughs> it hasn't been that long. Like, I I remember... When did you watch the show? When did I... I, wa I watched the show later, though, after a lot of the seasons had come out. I watched it in college. I was a freshman in college. You're really making me feel a little bit. Oh, you, you're the one asking, but that's that's when I got into <laughs> it. Um, but I loved it. I love the silliness and weirdness of it. It's fun. It's stupid funny. That's what I like. Like, you know, Naked Dunn and mm. Airplane and and, like and wasn't Pl Principal Blackman, they couldn't come up with a name, so they just put... Uh, they, well, how did, I don't know why they chose Principal Blackman. I do, I chose the first name, though. Yeah. Because when they were putting diplomas, they had to go, the art department was putting diplomas, they had to go on the wall. It was like, what's your first name? I said, give me a moment. Then I say, Onyx. Ooh, I like that. Onyx Blackman, yeah. That is great. That's a cool thing. Yeah. And uh, that's... No, it just seems very cool because I don't know many people that have been on, you know, full television shows. Um, so I'm yet. the first television <laughs> well, I've, star kind of this. I've had, I've had, hit. I've had people that have been on TV shows. Like who? Who's been here? Um, well, actually, no, I take that back. Yeah, because I have had. Um, Am I the first? Uh, no, because now. Who's before me? <sighs> Jacob Williams, I've had. I don't even know who that is. <laughs> he's on an MTV sketch show, and he's done uh, America's Got Talent. I've had um, Adam Grabowski too, and uh, Jay Washington as well. A few other people, but but no one has been. Jay Washington, yes, has been in this bit. Yes. Was he on this side? Yes, all my guests are on this side. Like so. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. If this were if the, your podcast becomes a regular show. Mm hmm. Well, I'd be a frequent guest. No, no, not a, not a, no, it becomes a show show. Oh, a show show. I haven't even thought about that. Like, you mean like a late night show or something? Like a late night show, yeah. Oh, that could be fun. I would be down for that. Yeah. I would, yeah, I haven't even thought about that, but that would be cool. Are you just, you just use me for my minute celebrity? <laughs> no. And when you take off. I think you're an interesting person, and I like to have interesting people well, on the podcast. I'm interesting. That's I remember the first time I met you. I met you at Where? Susan Messing's wedding. I was photographing their wedding. I was ah. like the second shooting their wedding. I remember seeing you there, and I was a little intimidated. Because well, because I knew who you were. I thought it was the big lens on my camera, which was <laughs> rather intimidating. <laughs> I get told that a lot. Like if I ever come like anywhere with my my real camera and my big lens, you were like, wow. Like I've had people. That's a massive lens, or that's. You get all nervous. And I'm like, all right, you know, no need to feel self conscious. I get it. It's big equipment, you know, but um, but yeah, that was a really fun wedding, and I, I remember seeing you and also the girl that played uh, Meredith from The Office was there too. Oh 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 oh! Uh, uh, blanking on her name. Um, I took a picture. She had. Uh, uh, she, was, she had a beautiful, yeah. She yeah. she looked. She, they they really downplayed her in that. Like she yeah, looks she, great in person. Person, they make, um, they make her look at home. But I was like, I just remember being a little bit intimidated. I was like, okay, like that's you know. Totally, no need to be intimidated. Oh yeah, well now now clearly I'm not. But I've seen you around more in the stand up scene and getting you know getting to know you more and, that, that way. and so now you don't respect me anymore. So it's like <laughs> you're less intimidated now. <laughs> That's what happens. People vibrate on your frequency. And then it's like, oh, I can do this to them. <laughs> they start doing things they think they can get away with. But don't try it, Sarah. Okay. All right. I won't try that. <laughs> is this a king size? This is a queen size bed. A queen size it's bed. Too small. Yeah. I would like to, you know, get a mattress sponsor one of these days and then just give me a new bed. That would be fantastic. Yeah. And then I would just say the mattress company at the beginning of it. So this would be the spot where if any mattress company wants to be sponsored, I will well, plug you in. On a posturepedic stain master type yes. mattress. So, yeah. What's the sleep number? Um, I don't even know what that is. I know that like I have a mattress that is like an, it was an expensive mattress. It's like not cheap, but it was, uh, it's like a Tempur-Pedic-ish mattress. <laughs> but I don't know. I like it. It works, but... You don't know your sleep number. That's okay. I don't know my sleep number. I don't know if everyone knew their sleep number. Do you just like, is it like a horoscope? Does everybody know what it is? It's like, if, ah, I was born. If I had that kind of a mattress, I wouldn't know my sleep number. Well, I don't have one of those kinds of mattresses. I don't either. I think I probably have one of those mattresses. I think I could put wine on one end and jump on the other end of the bed and the wine wouldn't fall over. But I'm not 100% on that because I've never really tried that. I don't know if that's really a comfortable mattress. I don't know. One of the jump on the bed and the mm -hmm. wine is not jostling. That just sounds like yeah. you're sleeping on a rock. That's true. A slab of stone. Well, um, 
Yeah, for me it doesn't matter because I can sleep so easily. You know, with the narcolepsy, it's so easy for me to sleep. Now, is it when you get more excited, you're more apt to fall asleep? Well, there are two different types. So, uh, a cataplexy, which they make fun of in films, where the people fall down randomly. Yeah. That's called a cataplexy, and I do that, and that usually happens at heightened states of emotion. So, if I'm if I get very excited, if I get very angry, if I if I've definitely done it where I've laughed so hard that I've had a cataplexy. And you just fall. And yeah, that, that my whole body collapses. It's like a, it's a loss of muscle control in your body. Um, but then there are other times where I might be sitting in a theater or at a movie or reading a book, and then I just get tired and I fall asleep. So this is no, this is no. <laughs> So is this considered? Because yeah, you you have an narcolepsy, but I don't consider it as a, like a disease. No, it's it's a dis it, well, it's a disorder is what it's considered because it's right. like a neurological. Um, there's like a chemical in the brain I'm missing or something like that, and um, but so it's not disease. It's not like something you can catch. Right, yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't think. Of it. But it's uh, yeah, I mean it's a disorder. Um, you say it's not nothing you can catch. And no, no, but <laughs> uh, but I think it is hereditary. They haven't proven it yet. But I take medicine for it, so it's all right. There's still some things. So when you get excited, you're more apt to uh, have a cataplexy. Possibly, yeah. So if, it's, if, if you're essentially with your lover or something like that, could that cause? Oh, actually, well, it's funny because some people have different triggers. So there are some women, thank God I'm not one of them, there are some women that will have cataplexy at the point of orgasm. Right. I'm like, that would suck. How badly would that suck? Like, because every well. time you get to the point where you'd have a... You'd be able, your body would completely collapse, and that'd be So you're awful. saying at the peak of the, when it's starting yes. the orgasm, then you fall asleep. That, that's what some, I've read experience. about it. Some women do that. I thank God I don't do that. But, um, are you frustrated? What? I, um, I, I assume they are. They're, I haven't spoken to them, but that would be interesting uh, to talk to someone that does that. But I've read about cases where people do that, and that's just very unfortunate. Um, <laughs> because... Yeah, and like what it puts the the other person in an awkward situation. Like, what is the other person supposed to do? Wake like, their ass up. <laughs> hey, hey, let's finish this. <laughs> so if they, uh, but it's not. No, it doesn't happen usually. And then, and then if they didn't do a good job, it's like you know you didn't bring me near orgasm. I didn't fall asleep. <laughs> so, I guess I never thought about that either. So you'd be pretty bad. They you get kicked out of bed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with um. Yeah, it's, thankfully that's never been really much of an issue. Let's move um, on to our next question. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so do you have any weird sleep stuff that you do? Weird sleep stuff? Mm-hmm. I see as you sleep on my hand like this. You sleep on your hand? That, like this, and then, you know, I'll switch to the other side. And you, sl- you just sleep with your hand? On my hand like this, yeah. Oh, wow. That's... The Buddha position. Ah. Uh-huh. Seeing that my shape is kind of get like a Buddha, so yeah. Like a Buddha? Buddha. <laughs> Wow. wow. Or I'll sit up and fall asleep. You, you fall asleep sitting up? I can sleep any kind of way. It doesn't, uh, it, I have no problem sleeping. Yeah, me too. I sleep like... That's because I don't do a lot of wrong stuff. Yeah, my, so my sleep's not troubled. Oh, okay. So you believe that living like a good life and like doing morally good things helps you sleep better at night? I, I think so. Unless, you know, outside of being some That's obsessive really- personality, but... But that's a really interesting concept. I never thought about that. Like, well, I wouldn't say I believe it. Like mm-hmm. it's like, but I think some people are troubled by some of the things they do. No, like some they, people don't have a conscience and they sleep perfectly. So, but then some people have the guilt of something, and then that weighs on them and keeps them awake. Yeah. Huh. Like those bodies they buried someplace, and you know, Ooh. they may have gotten away with it, but <laughs> ah, that's creepy. Keep them awake, yeah, you know? that that's that's crazy. Yeah. Well, that's good that you don't You'll have. You'll never any- find. Where I put the bodies. <laughs> I'll sleep at night. Do you snore? Yes, I do. Yeah, me too. I talk in my sleep too. Oh man, that's bad. But I don't like talk where it really makes sense. Like basically, like a qualification for dating me is like you have to be a heavy sleeper. That's just the way it is. <laughs> so you would discount somebody if they you couldn't do that. If you're attracted to the person. Oh, yeah, but, I mean, I don't really date that much anyways, but <laughs> when I... There's 35 people in this bed. 36 guests in this bed for my podcast. 
not to count the people that are non guests. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's right. But <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, um, yeah, I don't know. You wouldn't. You wouldn't. Okay. So generally speaking, you uh, they have to be able to. If it's a relationship, if it's someone I'm just having fun with, then I don't care. But, like, if it's a relationship, yeah, because that gets to people. Like, if, if I'm talking to my sleep or snoring in my sleep, that, that can put a strain on things, if they're a light sleeper. Oh, what? Get, why can't they get in, in earplugs? I guess they could. I just, I don't know. I'm, I just rather nip that problem girlfriend, in the bud. Talk, just talk to the girlfriend. Get earplugs. Don't complain about my snoring. <laughs> get earplugs. I fall asleep, and I don't wake me up when I'm snoring. Yeah, I guess I just, I try to be more courteous. I don't know. I guess it's like, I'll be courteous if the person isn't a heavy just sleeper. Rude. But it's just like, eh, I don't know. But, <laughs> but yeah, so I do snore on a talk in my sleep. and. So have you woke, woke yourself up from talking? I've woken myself up from laughing in my sleep before. Oh, like, I, I'll be like laughing in my sleep and then I wake myself up. <laughs> Let's say you're talking in your sleep and could I say something to you to get you to divulge more of what you're talking about? Oh, yeah. I will have a conversation with somebody in my sleep. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've had conversations with people. Like, I, I definitely road trips are where I get in trouble. <laughs> people like to mess with me on road trips because I fall asleep so easily. So they'll just have a conversation with me back and forth in my sleep. One time I was on a road trip, and I don't know what I was talking about, but I was like, they're like, I was like, I'm Chinese. They're like, oh, yeah, can you speak Chinese? And then I just started hearing, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> That's racist. I'm in a Chinese. I can get away with doing that. You're 8 Chinese? Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Yeah. Um, it's, and that wasn't racist. I'm, I'm, I'm ha my dad's parents, uh, half uh, Chinese, half Spanish. What are the five styles of Cantonese cooking? Um, I don't know. You go out. Either. You go. You go out to the market. You buy it, <laughs> or you use the rice cooker. <laughs> um, I've only been to China once, so really, mm -hmm. did you I went. Do it? I did. I went to China, Cambodia, and Vietnam on a trip by myself for like three weeks. <laughs> by yourself? Yeah. That's cool. Um, I like to see the world, and so I went to China because I had by myself because I had friends that either didn't have the money or the time to go. So I decided I wanted to see the world, and I just went on this trip. <laughs> so for three months? Three weeks. Three no, weeks. no, no, not three months. Um, three weeks. Yeah, I found a Groupon <laughs> and went over there on a Groupon. <laughs> I know that sounds ridiculous. <laughs> no, it does sound ridiculous. It's, so what comes with the we came with the trip? What, what's oh, the group on? well, the group on included um, your round trip flight to China to Beijing, six night hotel stay, and almost all the food in all the locations. It was twelve hundred dollars. That's it for the flight and the hotel stay. It was like a double tree. It was nice. I took a gamble. I could have had a crappy airline or something like that. It was great. Right, right. And then I just added on the trip. I was like, I added on to go to Cambodia and a friend teaching in Vietnam, and then I went there. Right, right, and checked right. all that. But, I mean, I don't know. I just like to travel and, you know, explore different cultures. It's something I enjoy to do. I haven't done that in a little bit. But I, I would like to go to Europe again sometime in the next year. Mm. What about you? Do you like to travel? I, I yes. Yes. <laughs> I do. I do a lot of traveling to the Caribbean. Oh, yeah? Where? Where at? Whereabouts? Uh, Belize, Bonaire, Cozumel, uh, Bahamas, um, See you, Cortez Baja. Oh, that's um, fantastic. Yeah, I do a lot of scuba diving. Do you like, do you like, diving. I was about to ask you if you do scuba diving. I do a lot of scuba diving. I've only done scuba diving once. I have over 500 scuba dives. So you're like certified. I'm a, a patty certified scuba diver. So how far can you go down? My deepest dive was 151 feet for only six minutes. Wow. You know, it's like you still have air, but if you keep breathing at like that level, it becomes toxic to you. So you have to come up to her lower elevation and finish your dive out. So I have only, got, I've only done it once, but I got to go down to 60. Um, and that was... I wasn't certified to go that low, but at the time they took us to that. Yeah. See, what scares me about the ocean is like when you go down to a certain point, there's just a drop off and it's just black and just scary. You know what I mean? Because you, you, you can't see the... You can't see the... You have to... You have to... You have to you know before getting that deep. Well, getting that deep, but then you just looking at it. Because like, when you're just looking down there. Just hanging, man. Just hanging there. It's like flying. 
Oh. It's like all the dreams I have about flying. So <laughs> I never fly. In my dreams of flying, I always, always fly slow. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you, know. you fly in slow motion. Nice. Yeah. And it, I hate it because I get suckered into the dream each time. Thinking it's real. Thinking it's real. It's like, oh, I remember how to fly. Just take these three steps, and then I'm flying. And then I never realized it's a dream. It, it, you can't. Lately, I mean, like in the past 20 years, yeah. I've been able to catch myself like, it's a dream. But do you ever do lucid dreaming where you realize it's a dream and you're like, it's a dream. This is great. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> no, I know. I no. Not. I, no, I don't have a. If I take too much uh, I'm in B6, I have a vivid dream recall. What's that? That's when you have uh, very intense dreams, very colorful dreams. The color, colors can be so bright, they pop you, they make you pop up out of your sleep. Oh, wow. So then you have to cut back on vitamin B6. <laughs> I love that this is like halfway a PSA. Like every time you've got something important, you're like, hey, hey. Don't t- t- take your vitamin B, but don't take too, too much, much vitamin B6. B6. <laughs> Vivid dream recall. Ah, I've never heard of that before. That's intense. Google it. Google it. Google it. <laughs> yeah. Ah. So, but yeah, uh, scariest dive was not with sharks. You did? You did with two, sharks? Two shark dives. Wow. <laughs> Hammerheads in Baja and uh, reef sharks in um, Nassau, Bahamas. How close did you get? How close did the sharks get? Really close. I mean, like as close as these cameras. That's really scary. Yeah, it can be. But the scariest thing was ha- uh, sea lions. Ski lions, ski- sea lions are scary as F U C K. Yeah. Yes. You can say fuck on here. It's all right. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah. It's okay. Like this uh, is. It a- feels strange being in a bed and all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's odd. Like I feel like some people get really, really comfortable, and they just like, you know, can curse like a sailor. But I guess, I guess sometimes you feel like you gotta be proper. <laughs> Was I being proper just now? By by spelling out F U C K. Yeah. Well, I guess I, I feel like you spell it out for like children, but then if you have smart enough children, okay, so they'll just say it. <laughs> well, maybe the dumb kids watching, so they won't. Care. <laughs> uh, but yeah, sea lions are scary as fuck. Yeah. They, uh, they, it's like a bear on the water. Oh, so it's literally like a lot. Like, it's like, it's, are they fast? Yeah. That's the whole thing. I'm shaped pretty much like a sea lion. <laughs> but I can't, it, uh, once we were in Sea Cortez, and we were supposed to go see them, but the visibility was very bad. So we went to do another dive, but we weren't supposed to see them. So I jump in the water, and I see like a thousand barracuda in a, in a ball, just swirling around. So my girlfriend's fins are swimming, and beyond your door, the visibility gets bad. You can't see. So I take three snapshots. I have my camera. I shoot so things. What do you shoot under? What, what do you shoot with under underwater? <laughs> uh, well, you have a. I had a a, a Nikon. Uh, you know, like a case. You know, yeah, in a, a housing. Nice. Uh, you know, like a silver jobby. Wow, yeah, like, that's you see, nice. You know, yeah, they're surprising. But uh, so anyway, I took three shots. And so I'm about to see my girlfriend's fins disappear into the, the mist. And right over my head, sea lion. Scared the fuck out of me. And I'm like, please, God, don't let him come back and check me out. Please, God, don't. He didn't. Well, I wonder if they just, like, see that and they're just like, I don't know what that is. I don't know. Like, I'm not that hungry right now. I'm not going to try it. They, they have mean energy. Yeah. Uh, the next day, we went back to see them. And they were really in a, let's say I was only 15 feet down so it was very easy you know to go back up and uh they just kind of have a mean energy now the sea pups they're swimming bumping to your mask and they they're playful but sea lions yeah sea lions are assholes <laughs> you, you ought to see this uh on youtube there's a sea lion that steals this man has just caught a mahi mahi you know those yeah. dolphin yeah guy. him and his partner he's got one his, his partner has one and the sea lion comes up from the side, snatches it, and <laughs> steals his. <laughs> Google it. Oh, that's no, funny. YouTube it. You'll see it. That's funny. It um, is very funny. I do believe in energy, though. Like you said, like it had like a negative energy. Like I definitely, yeah. especially with animals, it's like you sense that, you feel that. It's Just like, like you do with people. I, yeah, and I think a lot of people, for some reason, we we don't trust our instincts as much. Yeah. And I don't know if it's because of technology or because we think that we're so smart that. 
that we don't trust our natural instincts. If you're really smart, you trust your natural instincts. Because like that, I think that that's the way with like dating or people that I get a creepy vibe from. Right. And then like, I mean, I, 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 I'm somebody who follows my instincts. If my instinct is to like, leave a bar, even if I don't know why that instinct is, I will leave that bar or go somewhere else or right. do something. And that's just a, I believe in our primal animal instincts in terms of those things. Right. And I think like anytime I've got against that instinct, it's definitely been like, oh yeah, my instinct was right all along, <laughs> you know? Um, and I, I don't think a lot of people listen to that. And I, well, people are dumb. Yeah. But <laughs> people are dumb, which is why you have dumb, funny comedy stuff. <laughs> You know what, as Amy Sedaris said uh, back in the 80s, stupid people need to laugh, too. <laughs> so, that's true. That's yeah. True. Uh, but, yeah, people are dumb. Mm. That's why half of them are voting. I'm not saying for who. Uh, this might come out after. Uh, well, we'll see. It's a couple weeks out. Yeah, so, so, so we, might, we might already, by the time this airs, we might already have a, hopefully, Madam President. <laughs> I, was, I was hoping that. I was going to vote for the other guy. Uh, oh. <laughs> not. Oh gosh, that would be scary. Yeah, he's but, uh, uh, so, tell me a little bit about your. Yeah, it's cool. Look, tell me a little bit about this new thing that you're filming because we mentioned it. Um, but the premise I really like the. What shrink? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The concept of the show is the uh, shrink. It's about this psychiatrist, the guy who mm -hmm. wants to get hours to be a psychiatrist, and he finds a loophole in the system, mm -hmm. and he winds up getting. Uh, clients off of a Craigslist, Craigslist, ah, and he has it. sessions in his mom's garage. Oh, and I didn't know, the sessions in his mom's garage, that's yeah, pretty cool. Right, right, yeah. And who plays the, sh the shrink? Tim Baltz plays the shrink. Oh, he's great. He is great, he is great. That's fun, because you've got all, like... And it's produced by Ted Trumper, who, who, uh, who produces The Daily Show with Trevor oh. Noah. Oh, I... That's great. I think Trevor's doing a real good job this this election Trevor season. Trevor's doing. He's very. He's no John Stewart. Well, I think. But who is? But the thing is, you got. But he's great. But you got to remember, the Daily Show didn't start with John Stewart. There was somebody before John Stewart who? in the Daily Show. There was no one before John Stewart. I believe there was. Who? I believe it was somebody else before him. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but um, but he. I don't like the thing is that Trevor is going into his first. He's finishing up his first year. Trevor's great. And and I think it takes a while to get in the rhythm of yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And That's and it's so hard to be compared to John Stewart, who've been doing it for fifteen years. Right. Well, this different style and everything. I mean, it's just like John Oliver. Mm -hmm. John oh, Oliver. And, but but I love his new show on HBO. Yeah. Love. I, I do too. Love. He's he's great also. He's great also. I mean, different energy, but mm -hmm. they're both upfront. In your face, mm -hmm. don't apologize what they say type comedians, yeah. much like Colbert. Yeah, but his was, I think he had a different transition going from his character to his real personality on Late Night. Who? Colbert. I don't think he had much of a transition. Well, I mean, well, because well, his character play, is like, different. Yeah. He couldn't pretend to be a... He couldn't pretend to be a pundit repo. anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I, and I, I, I like the fact that he's out of his character because he can... Be himself. Oscillate between the two and be himself. And, and then the interviews are longer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some people, real Colbert fans, are they like the old show, the way the show was. And I was irritated by the show sometimes, often, because... You knew how he really was. Well, no, he really was, and I knew that the interviews weren't long enough. Mm -hmm. I wanted them to be longer. I, know, I think that there's a lot of good, smart... Like, I love Samantha B and what she's doing, too. I, I think haven't that, seen it yet, Samantha. I'm gonna that that is such a good, smart show. And um, it just... I like that people are getting a little bit more freedom, I think, to have their voice in saying what they want in the political sphere, you know? Yeah. Um, but, I don't know. That's, uh, that's something that interests me. I don't do a ton of political comedy, but I always... Uh, I do like those kinds of shows. I, uh, well, I don't either, because... Anyway, yeah, uh, why don't I... Oh, I guess kind of politics, in a sense, kind of bores me, mm -hmm. and it's uh, it's interesting on one hand, but it's BS on another, and um, it, it aggravates me. But yeah. I mean, I, I like it, but I, I think it's good to write about stuff that that you're passionate about and you're interested in, and if it's something that bores you, then you're not going to be the right person to write it. I think you know, like wait, could I do a political show? Yeah. Probably not, because I I do something stupid and wind up getting in trouble. <laughs> so I couldn't do a political show. Oh, I see. What is uh, your dream show? Like, what, like, do you have other... I would probably want to do... I would probably want to do, a, like, a cop show. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Would you be the good cop or the bad cop? 
Uh, that'd be that probably be a good call. Yeah. For, you know, somebody on the line. Yeah, somebody that's, that's that does the right the thing. The captain's always calling into his office. Oh, we want to look at your record. It's the longest my arms. It's a mile long. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I could see you as that. And um, and you've been filming. Um, she, what was the? And you said there's a movie too that you're filming, and that's gonna come out. Yeah. 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 Do you know what? I don't. I don't. No. I don't. No. That's. Cool. But you you currently live in Florida, and you fly out to Chicago or LA or New York, whatever. You I'm put, whatever whatever needs you need you. me to be. <laughs> you need me. You can find me. I'm on Facebook. <laughs> if you get a little crazy, I'm gonna block you. I'm just telling you right now. But if you're sensible, sound in mind. Send me a message. Get the job for me. Mm-hmm. Make sure uh, you fly me to where I need to go. <laughs> uh, put me up in the a nice hotel. Doesn't have to be five star, but it can't be a two star. Okay. You got your standards. You gotta I have got my standards. I need an exit row or business class. I don't need first. I, I'm I'm six feet four. I need the room. So did you play, this is probably a question you go, did you play a lot of sports growing up? You didn't? No, and I, 100 pounds ago. Yeah. I used to be a stand-in for Michael Jordan on some commercials. Oh, you did? Yes. That's some crazy. Some commercials and Chevy commercials. Oh, that's so cool. The so thing you- is, I'm not really good at playing basketball. <laughs> <laughs> Don't See, really follow sports. You know, so was, you, did, I mean, you knew who he was, obviously. I knew he was. Of course, you know Mike. Yeah. So, but wait, after so, a so few commercials, yeah, yeah, <laughs> he uh, he looks at me. He's like, "Look at this guy. Looks like he should be with the Nationals." And he throws a basketball at me. And I swear to God, I'm nervous as fuck. <laughs> My armpits are sweating, and the room felt like it went dark, you know. Michael Jordan has thrown me a basketball. I know I can play basketball. You know, I'm not good. Did you catch it, at least? I caught the ball, so I bounced, and I'm going toward the hoop. But I'm, I've never been able to... It's like I'm a great dancer. I can roll skate. I can do all other kind of crazy mm-hmm. shit. But with basketball, even though uh, I've been able to dance and stuff, I can never run, hop, and take the ball, do the transition with them, bounce the ball, and go like this. Just the gravity, go like this. Mm-hmm. I can't do that and lay it up. Ah. And, and run. <laughs> the whole dance. I can't <laughs> do that. Ball rolls off my elbow and everybody starts cracking up and I'm embarrassed. Oh. So I joined this gym. One has a climbing wall downtown on uh, South Park, uh, mm-hmm. South Street, Water Street or something. And he was working out there. He would work out there and play basketball. Oh, I know. That's like a fancy, fancy gym. Yeah, it's a nice place. I forget. I forget what. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, they some kind of club. Things. It's um. Oh, it's gonna drive me nuts. But it's some kind of like it's like a special club. It's, it's good. Like, yeah. And a great stadium. Like I think Oprah used to go there too. Um, no. Oprah went to the East Bank Club. That's what I was thinking. I was thinking East Bank. That's club. not the East Bank Club, sir. I'm sorry. I'm not that fancy. Oh, I don't. I, I I you know. You are that fancy. Look at these pajamas you got on. These are just comfortable pajamas. Oh, comfortable my ass. This is 1960s sexy Ooh. Bond pajamas. I know when I see them. Yeah, these are just, I don't know, they're just comfy. Actually, I wear them in the summer for, you know, like I'll wear them out in the summer. It's just so comfortable. Like there just needs to be more of a fashion forward thing of pants that just are like pajamas because they're the most comfortable thing in the world. Because these skinny jeans... No, they are such a bitch to get on, and uh, it's I, it's. I, I want that trend to end. <laughs> I haven't had skinny jeans since 1979. Uh. So I went another feeling, uh, but no, those are cool. I did wear silk pajamas once. Silk, yeah. I feel like Principal Blackman might wear silk pajamas. Principal Blackman would wear silk pajamas. I could definitely see that. Yep, mm. silk sad pajamas. Yeah. Do you feel like after playing a character for so long, you, like, miss that character? Um, yeah, I kind of miss him in one point. And, well, it's, he was the longest character that I'd done. Because it was five years, right? Or three, seasons three seasons in a movie. Oh, three seasons in a movie. Four. Yeah. But it was on TV longer. Uh, yeah, but I guess I just felt like it was, like, a lot, yeah. I wish it had been. Mm-hmm. I could have used the cashola. <laughs> Um, but then they still played it for a long time after. Yeah, well, yeah. it was on for years. Yeah. 
Started in 1999, so it was a long time ago. Yeah, well. You're probably just a toddler. <laughs> Watching a show you should well, have been I, I didn't. Watch. I didn't get into what was wrong it. With your until, parents? I didn't get into it until I was uh, in college. So you're trying to say you were raised right? Excuse me. I was. My parents didn't let me watch R-rated movies. I used to get arguments all the time. I wasn't able to get R-rated movies basically until I could drive and get them myself. <laughs> what was your first X-rated movie? I did not. I don't actually watch that. You've watched the X-rated movie. I watched one in Prague at the Sex Machine Museum, but I really Sex Machine Museum. Yeah, Prague is a Sex Machine Museum, and I watched one. What prompted you to go to the Sex Machine Museum? Well, it's a museum in Prague. It's a thing to do. I was like nineteen, and I was like, oh yeah, I was doing a travel abroad with friends. And anyways, we went to this thing, and they were playing one of the oldest porno pornos ever. It was a silent film porno. And it was like this, because it was from like the early 19, it was like 1920s. Was it erotic or something? No, it was hilarious. <laughs> it was the funniest thing I've ever seen. Um, but yeah, so it was like, because back then, women who were bigger were considered attractive because that meant they were wealthy Ruben enough. Rubenesque. They, they were able, they were, they were considered wealthy enough to feed themselves. So the women were very voluptuous and big, and the men were little tiny skinny skinny guys with like no muscles or anything, and it was just hilarious. That would have been. And um, they had like almost like a soundtrack, like just that you know the piano, <laughs> and like it was just a really funny part because it's all like one take, and it's like the guy is just the funniest music of the guy trying to get it up, <laughs> and it was just like it was just I don't know how to say, it, but it was comical, and that was, and I. I'm somebody, yes, I've seen some risque TV shows. I've seen, you know, I watched, like... But you didn't find them, they didn't attract you. You didn't find them compelling. You didn't find them, like... No, I mean, like, I've watched, like... I've, I've watched TV shows, like, uh, like I've watched Girls, you know, I've, I've seen Sex and the City, and all that, all that other crap. That and it's... Crap. Yeah, I know, but I've seen shows that have... Uh, Talk about something that's erotic that really turns you on. No, I don't watch pornography. I think... I didn't say it has to be pornography. Erotica and pornography are two different things. No, I don't really watch it because I... I, I believe... So there's I've no film I on television you'd seen that was erotic, and you said, man, that's sexy. I like well, that. I mean, I think that there are definitely things, parts of movies and parts of things, but I can't think of one in particular off my off the top of my head. I'm sorry. But suddenly, I became the interviewer. No, it's totally fine. We just switch hats. That's okay. Uh, it's a conversation. So, for me, it's a. Uh, I just I believe in it. I have an imagination, and I don't think I need to. I mean, I think I probably with an ex, we probably watched a porn once, but I'm just like not into that. Like, it's just. It's a long porn. I don't have a problem with porn. I think it's fine. I it think was the wrong porn. What? It was the wrong porn. No, I have a very good imagination, and I think that I don't... I have a very good imagination, but I've seen porn. I don't, like, watch it. I've seen... Like, okay, so I've seen it before, There's but I There's tons of bad stuff. There's lousy porn. It's like improv. There's a lot of bad... Yeah, yeah, yeah yes, exactly. <laughs> porn is like improv. There's a lot of bad ones. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of bad improv. When you find that show you really like... And sometimes it's two-person scenes, sometimes it's three-person three person scenes. scenes. <laughs> but, and sometimes there's a lot of bad casts. So, you know. Yeah. But... <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. So, and, and you still do improv too. Yes, I do. Yeah, and you play bastards. I yeah we yeah we perform bastards of the underground. Ooh. And yeah. improv too. Improv, I I join the cast of improv when I'm in town. Mm -hmm. I enjoy doing their shows. Improv, I like it because it's audacious. I get to be ridiculous. Ridiculous and break some of the rules of uh, improv where. Because we tell a lot of jokes, mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's joke right? And we do scenes too, but but uh, I I love creating scenes and having a scene that impactful. And it's about something I don't like. Just so you like to say, say something deeper with the scenes. So more more uh, the, the second city kind of philosophy way of writing. <laughs> uh, just yeah. Um. Yeah, creating a scene and tell the story. You know what's what's it about? What are you trying to say? And then is it funny? But the funny is not necessarily trying to make it, it, it funny. It's about the relationship between the two characters. That's what I enjoy. That's what I enjoy. I, and I, I, that's why I like doing films. I like learning the lines. I think I always learn the lines, then emotionalize the lines, and then once I've had those lines down, that I emotionalize them in the way manner I need to do it. 
then it frees me up to improvise. That's when I have the most fun of the film, when I go to improvise on the film. So you learn the lines first. Yes, and then the Figure out how you're going to do them. And then do you do a take where it's like the way the line is, then you do a take where you improvise, or you just kind of do it in the moment? Uh, I do it in the moment uh, because I don't... You can never ask anybody. That, that's the hard part about, like, sometimes you get an audition. Because I have, my firm belief is director, who the hell ever cast the person casting you, they don't know what they want until I bring it to you, until I show it to you. You don't know what you want. And it, and it, so generally, if I do an audition, I try to, if I can, do it my way. Mm-hmm. And then I always expect notes, even though, even if it's great, I expect notes. Give me some direction. I'm not the greatest actor in the world. So, uh, so he goes, oh, that was great. Pull back a little bit. Maybe a bit with the crate or... So, so do you, uh, do you ever go into an audition and you know that you, your choice was so strong that they're like, oh, that was what we wanted, but we didn't know we wanted it until you did it. <laughs> oh, I think that does happen. Uh, I'm, I'm usually not their choice. Usually they don't know that I can bring whatever I'm bringing to the table. Gotcha. So they just, just like, what... So they'll, they'll say, just don't act, just read the copy and don't, don't try to act, you know. And I hate when somebody right, tells you that. Because you're an actor. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> and, uh, and I guess they know what they're talking about. They may think somebody may overact. And, you know, I, and not that I wouldn't overact, but I hate when somebody tells you, just read it. Is, is to don't, don't act. If that's the case, let your secretary read it. You don't need to have me in here. That's a good point. You know, the, but, uh, but then, but if I get a script and I learn my lines, I've seen, I've seen how this script speaks to me. And what I'm going to do on it. So let me do my thing first before you try to say, listen, do it. And anyway, I've always done, did my thing first. And it's like, and that was wonderful. You know, because, you, know, you know, the hardest part about auditioning is always the exit. So oh. it's like, it's an awkward. Ta-da, thank you very much. Oh, where are you going? Where are you going? You know, yeah. I'm, I'm leaving, man. I'm out. So you want to leave first so that they ask you to come back. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You want to leave first. So. I, I think the choices are important. I think that I'm just discovering that more with some of the stage reading stuff and like just being like, oh, yeah, read it your way. And then we have notes, you know, that's just, but it's cool to see what everyone brings to the characters. Right, right. And just from reading it on the page. Yeah. And um, I think that brings a different life to a script. Yeah, and I try to live in a script, you know. I'm, there's doorbells and knocks at the door, reading the script on it. And have you ever written a script? Or written a screenplay or anything like that? Not a screenplay, but I've written a script. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I was kind of proud of called Cop Drama that, that I was trying to sell. And I'm still trying to sell. Yeah. yeah. That's fun. And yeah. part written for yourself, I assume? Yes, I wrote myself in. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool to have uh, stuff that you write yourself in. I think. Uh, yeah. Somebody once, uh, somebody once told me it's like if you're not getting cast and stuff, just write something for yourself, <laughs> and then make it yourself if you have to. <laughs> yeah. But uh, and I guess you wrote for Second City. That was part of the job too. Right? No, I didn't. No. I didn't write. So you were just you were a performer for Second City. For, for primarily and foremost, a performer. Mm-hmm. I did hardly any writing. Were you doing touring or main stage? Or? I was doing touring and uh, I was uh, understudy for main stage. That's great. Yeah, it was kind of great. <laughs> kind of great. I wanted to work the main stage. Yeah. I wanted to be there with the gang that I started with. Ah. Uh, it wasn't meant to be. It's, it's really interesting how that is, because I know someone that recently got main stage, and I think it's great. I'm so happy for him. But he basically was like, I can't do stand-up for a year, you know? <laughs> he's, you know, so he's, like, so contracted in. Like, for a whole year, he's just doing main stage, and he's so talented in so many different ways right. that I almost wonder if it's a little limiting, because he... I think, no. Do you I understand think, what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I understand. That's exactly what you're saying, mm-hmm. because I know people that did both. For example, Jeff Thurman was a stand-up. Mm-hmm. It's still a stand-up. <laughs> it's still a stand-up, right. But mm-hmm. he was a different But I think improvisation will make you a better stand-up. Uh, yeah, I... Or can I think Once so, you too. find your own, I mean, stand up is—they're two different universes. But you know, you do stand up mm-hmm. and you do improvise. I I, I I wouldn't call myself a current improviser. I'd say I started at improv. I use improv as a way to write now. I I haven't improvised probably since I sat in with you at Bastards at last year. 
Really? Yeah. That's probably the last time I improvised, uh, I, like, in, in front of an audience. Um, I just uh, mostly been doing stand-up. I do sketch sometimes, but mostly... Mostly stand up and uh, written written material. Oh, well, that's good. I, mean, I, I realized I like creating something that if it goes well, I can repeat it again and again and again. And I love the feeling of improv, of like being in the moment with the right people. Yes, it is with the right. I like performing with people that are better than me. I, I, I don't agree. want to be the smartest guy in the room. And if I'm the smartest guy in the room, it's a pretty dumb room. <laughs> so pretty. I think that's a really good point. I find that sometimes I get over it, depending on the people I get intimidated. <laughs> right, right. Well, I don't... Uh, with with, with improv. With, with stand-up, it's different. But with improv, like when I sat in, it was like you, it was Chris Red, it was... Um, who else? There was another person that I was like, and the three of you were just sit, sitting in, and it, Bastards and I, I was like, oh gosh, I'm, I got intimidated. <laughs> oh, you shouldn't. Have Actually, with really good people, I'm talking like, you know, they're... My favorite, my favorite improvisers, uh, Susan Miss and TJ and oh, me. I love that. You know, they can, it's just, this is makes the greatness. They can say something and you open up the whole world for you. You can just see it. You can see yourself, you know, mm -hmm. uh, on Jamaica. You can feel sand on your feet. You know, they, they're a good improviser, can do that. A lot of people just kind of can be like talking to heads, say a lot of shit, but. You can't feel the scene. They're just being, and unless you're a Robin Williams, able to fire things off. And, yeah. Uh, but a, a really great improviser will will create that universe for you. You're able to play and have fun, and it's not just two people. Yeah. Talk. And I think it's also something a skill you build with people. It's like having a band that like jams. You know, the more you. But like, I, I don't work with TJ. I've never worked with him but a few times on stage, but. The times I've had, I have, he, dude just, your way. he just opens up a whole scene, and I've been like, man, I've been up here, I'm not feeling this shit that other people are talking, yeah. and this dude spits something out, it's like, great. And, and he's somebody that's like, I, I might be flipping channels or watching a TV show, I'm like, oh, there's TJ, you know, like, yeah. it's so crazy that he still lives in Chicago, yeah. and chooses to live here in Chicago, when clearly he could be in LA or New York, but he wants to live here. Man, he's, man, he's got checks to burn, you don't care, mate. <laughs> And do you miss being in Chicago? Yes, I do. Yeah. I, do. I mean, I, I love Florida because it puts me at peace and I resonate with it. I always thought Roman therapy was a bunch of crap. But I smell the sweet cut grass and I'm like, screw an audition. <laughs> Fuck a movie. <laughs> Fuck a theater. Yeah. But I do miss it at the beginning of the day. Yeah. Or beginning. Yeah, I, of the day. I don't think I can imagine like going, like that seems fun for like a week or something. Well, you're 19. <laughs> no, <come on. laughs> uh, but it's it's a fun. I don't know. I love the hustle and bustle of the cities. You know, but yeah, uh, I, I I like Chicago. I like New York only if I'm working. And I love, only if you're working in New York, you don't like it otherwise. If I'm not working in New York, I, I can't be there, man. Mm. It's one expensive whore. <laughs> yeah, you I know I'm right, New York. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why it's like, oh, LA's like not that much more than what I'm paying in Chicago. <laughs> LA's an expensive whore too, but a lot cleaner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's why. Yeah, yeah. I I've been to LA. I'm going to LA again in early December for a visit, and then going to New York in a couple weeks just to check it out. I don't know. Like I've been to it. Uh, I've been there, but not for comedy yet. So you've been, you've been to where? New York, but not for comedy right. <laughs> before. And I'm just done checking it out. So checking out comedy. Yeah, see if I like it. You know. I um, like it. Um, I think I'll like it, but I'm not sure if I like it as much as I like it. <laughs> you like LA for comedy? Um, I like LA. I think because I'm ready for a change. You know, like it, Chicago. I feel like New York's like a bigger Chicago. Um, a much more expensive Chicago. And it's definitely much more expensive Chicago. And LA feels like a breath of fresh air. It's like every day is beautiful. Yeah, every and, day is beautiful and, and the weather is nice. And there's a lot of possible TV opportunities over there and that's, you know, something I'm looking into. Yeah, for like writing and that kind of thing. Okay. You know, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, like not, not as much for, I mean, yeah, I'd love to do commercial stuff, but I'm not... Hey. Anything, I'm not. I'm not. I'm anything. not 105 pounds. You know, like I'm not. <laughs> well, you know, I don't think that that much matters. 
said about being like. I, yeah, if you're doing this, comedy, if you're doing comedy, I guess it doesn't matter as much. You no, know, it's, it's it's the content that you have, and you know you'd be able to draw that, draw it to you from your writing and what have you. And so you lived in New York and LA. Yes. Yes, and you were working in your you're filming strangers when you were in New York, right? Right. Where did that film? It filmed in um, Paramus, New Jersey, and uh, was it at a school? Yeah, it was at a school. You filmed at a school. Oh, cool. Hmm. Yeah, the first season was at it was in Paramus, and the second season was at some um, college. It was closed or something, but yeah, it was in Paramus, New Jersey. I forget the second. I just, I just remember the image of like her turtle or something that she brought with her in the, the locker. Yeah, this <laughs> so was always an animal. And it always died, right? One died, or then another was a woodpecker, and maybe a badger. Uh, no, no, not a badger. That was something. That was something sure. Now, because that was based out of a lot of improvisers, did you guys improv a lot? I improv a little, but it, it, it you know. Um, but yeah, there was. It was something proud. Just very little. I mean, you had the script, and then once you knew the script, that you can improvise around it. And, and I guess how different was that, like, experience, just because of how far technology's gone from then to, like, now filming with your CISO show? Like, in terms of getting scripts or doing that kind of stuff, has a lot changed, filming-wise? I don't think so. No. Uh, no, the biggest change for me was I had never... Well, I had done a TV show before, but when I would get a script, I would read the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then reading from beginning to end, and when you're doing a TV show, you just start in the middle, you know. So that was, it was disciplining myself to... To be able to start wherever. Start wherever. And the worst thing is, uh, new scripts, we're not doing everything I study. That's when the, that... And uh, will that happen like that right. day? They're like, yeah. oh, today yeah. we're going to shoot the scene, you have... 20 minutes to learn these lines. Uh, yeah, I mean, these, it's not the 20 minutes to learn the lines. These are the lines we're doing, and you get them, and you know, you, you're going to work your way through it. And I can tell when I get lines I'm really steaming and, and hot on them, and when I've gotten them that day. Mm. And uh, like I said, I always learn the lines and emotionalize the lines. And yeah, so you've got a pro. Did you study acting? Just self, self study. From doing improv, I became an actor. I like that. That's nice. <laughs> yeah, it did. It did. I mean, because I had never like done Shakespeare before. Have you done? I did. I did one, one play. I think uh, Mark Anthony and Julius Caesar. Oh, wow. uh, that's great. Played before. But from improv and pretending to be, you know, Caesar, where I go the sour. I was able to put, put myself in that mindset. So then when I actually got a play and they had to learn the iron pentameter and all that jazz. Uh, so you really like focus on your imagination and really putting your full self into that world, whatever world yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if I yeah, if I can, the only thing to stop me would be something physically that would be physically difficult. Gotcha. Most things are pretty They're like, hey, do a handstand. I'm like, oh, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure I can do that. Uh, but that's always fun with certain improv groups that try to push themselves to do ridiculous things. Like, Improv Shakespeare does that a lot, where they try to egg each other on oh, and do man, that stuff. Improv Shakespeare. Yeah. Well, you could probably still do it. Talk to Blaine. Blaine, I, I really respect. I think his... I really like uh, Improv Blaine Shakespeare. Blaine, call me. Mm -hmm. I really like Improv Shakespeare. It's a, it's a fun concept, and, yeah. and they've got a very specific style they do, so I like that. Yeah. That would be Yeah. So, yeah, so you've been back in Florida, and you, do you plan to come to visit Chicago a lot? Yes, I will be, because yeah. there'll probably be another season, so I will Ooh, return. Ooh, another season. The point I wanted to make about this show you're filming yes. is because what I think is so important is there have been shows filming in Chicago for a while. You've had Shameless, Chicago by Chicago PD. This is the first show that's a comedy that takes place in Chicago and is actually filmed in Chicago that I know of for a long time. I don't know if it takes place in Chicago. Well... 
whatever. It's filmed in Chicago. Okay. I can't think of another show because all the shows. You're that not going to make me break that confidentiality contract, getting kicked off the show. So just forget that, Sarah. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not asking about the show. I'm just saying I think it's so great for the industry in Chicago that it's finally bringing some industry to Chicago. The greatest thing about the show is that they had the wherewithal to hire me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Chicago PD didn't hire me. Ah. Chicago Met have been on it. Mm. Chicago Fire, huh? Chicago Law, or whatever the hell they have yeah, Chicago next. Chicago Law and Order. Uh, I don't know. They've got a lot of uh, those. They're going hardcore with that genre. Uh, I can't get into those kinds of shows, though. Oh, I love those kinds of shows. Mm, no. Nah. I, I don't like blood, so I can't see like anything like the medical ones or anything like that. So. I mean, you may not want to watch them. It's like if I had to be in a slave film. I can't watch another slave film. But you'd be in one. But I'd be in one. Oh, yeah. I mean, I would totally be in those. Yeah. Absolutely. I just don't even I watch I can't them. watch anything about the struggle. No. Oh, gotcha. Oh, Is yeah. there anything I'll that you be... like to binge watch on? Uh, well, things like, you know, Archer, Arrested mm-hmm. Development. Um, See, Arrested Development's a good sh- good example of a show that I think, you know. Stupid funny. You can't stupid, stupid funny. Only three seasons, but caught on later for other people, and it got brought back, which I thought was very cool. Yeah. But... The first um, season was more like catching up to everybody, and they didn't film it all together, so right. I don't know what they're going to do. And everybody was uh, highlighted. Blunt yeah. Talk. But yeah, I like Blunt Talk. I, I haven't seen the new season yet, but I've seen the season one, so I like that. Uh, is there only a season one? I think they're, yeah, two? they're filming season two right now. Oh, okay. Then I'm on season two. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure. But I like uh, I like the ri- ridiculousness, and that's what I like about these other platforms like Stars and Hulu and you know, CISO, that they're letting people try different stuff. The stars, that's also what had, oh, what was the one? Party Down came from stars. That's, that was a really cool, that was a show that only had like two seasons, but I don't know, I'm now I'm like nerding out on TV shows. <laughs> okay. Uh, but, but yeah, so. There's not a TV in this room. No, there's not. I don't believe, I, I try to keep this space uh, separate from that um, thing because I don't want to get lazy. So I have my, Partition I move, so when when I when I write, because I try to write in the mornings, I move my partition so that I can't see my bed from my computer, so I have my writing space so that I can write, um, <laughs> and so I don't have my TV. But if I want to watch a show, I can just watch my computer. Sorry. But yeah, no, no TVs. What about you? Do you fall asleep to the TV? Um, sometimes. Generally, I like, might listen to some meditative thing. Do you meditate? Yeah. What kind of meditation do you do? Oh. Do you TD? Transcendental? Mm-hmm. No, no. I just try to clear my head and think of nothing. Just think of nothing. I, uh, you know, get up. I used to listen to a lot of Wayne Dyer, G. Pop Chopra. So, you know, I get up, I uh, do my morning pages of 10 things I'm grateful for, like tomorrow. I'm grateful that I did this, you know, a lot of things are great. Grateful for it. Grateful that <coughs> the Cubs might win. <laughs> I'm grateful that the Cubs might win. <laughs> uh, you don't sound that grateful for it. I guess I chose the wrong grateful thing. Well, you know. We're they, grateful that you're not they, saying the winner in Chicago. Uh, well, grateful not saying the winner. I wouldn't necessarily say that because I don't, I don't. This winner's going to be bad. How, how do they know that? Yeah. They don't know anything. They're, they're like directors. They don't know what they want. They don't no, know. No, <laughs> winner's going to show you what's going to be bad. But, uh,. No, I, I was supposed to do stand-up tonight, but mm-hmm. because of the Cubs, I can't do it. So they better win. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm grateful for air. Grateful for, you know, a lot of people take for granted shit that we have every day. Mm-hmm. Air to breathe, water to drink. So, grateful things like that. Roof over your head, that kind grateful of thing. Grateful to have roof over my head, you know. Grateful to be doing this kind of work for this many years. Yeah, because you've been famous feast, for... Feast and famine for... I've been doing this for three years at least, and uh, <laughs> and uh, so yeah, you know, I'm, I'm grateful for that. So I, I always do that in the morning. Ten things I'm grateful for, and then I have five minutes of uh, quiet. Uh, send love to three people I don't like. Oh, I like and, that. And, and I usually have four. <laughs> you like. All right, this other person pissed me off again. <laughs> and uh, then ask for a direction for the day. That's really cool. That's a very, I like that. Um, yeah. I have a friend that she keeps a journal of um, 
it's a positive thought journal. Like, like she writes down, like, every day, like, something positive that happened that day. Right. So that way she can look back and remember positive things. So I like that whole positivity and sending positive yeah, vibes. Yeah, because you're, you're, you're never mindful of the positive things that happen. You have a 20 things positive happen to you during the day. One negative things happen, and that's the thing that stands out. That's a good point. And, um, it, you know, I've learned in the past years, it's... It's your subconscious that you always have to. You seem very balanced. I like that. Like that's nice. I'm. Um, that's really nice. That's I nice. I try. It took more to be with you to get you to say this. <sighs> you seem so mind, but you seem very mindful <laughs> of yourself, and I like that. I've tried meditation, but every time I do, I fall asleep. <laughs> um, because if I'm not actively thinking about something or doing something, if I try to clear my mind, I just fall asleep. Which is why I don't like doing yoga. Because at the end of yoga, they're just like, just stay still for a minute, and I always fall asleep. <laughs> and I always get embarrassed, because like, someone has to wake me up and be like, hey, the next class is happening. <laughs> yeah. they're, they're always like, hey, lay still, and don't think of anything. And I'm like, okay, and within five seconds, I'm asleep. <laughs> right, right. So, but you're relaxed, though, right? Oh, yeah, relaxed. But if I've ever... Well, the whole thing is, your subconscious has all the negative jazz, or it's just the... That's where all the programming is done. Mm -hmm. So if you're consciously trying to manifest some type of thing, but you have all this subconscious be bullshit, oh. then you're only going to manifest counter intention. You're not going to be able to manifest anything. Oh. So it's convincing your subconscious, it's altering your subconscious to get you to manifest the real things that you want in life. Ooh, I like that. I like, I like that. That's a cool way to look Delicious. at it. <laughs> do you do voices too? Uh, what, do I do voices? Voiceover stuff. Not enough of them. I feel like you've got a lot of fun voices. Yeah, I do. Um, You're going to be my agent. Ah. My voiceover agent. <laughs> uh, I wish I knew more about that world, believe me. There's time. There's time. <laughs> but, well, yeah. uh, as we are winding down a little bit, I always end my podcast with asking people, like, what are your dreams for the future for yourself? My dreams for the future of myself. I guess, uh, I think I've always wanted to become a really rich man to take care of the people I love and do things. Like, you know, we could say, Sarah, we're going to the Bahamas tomorrow. We're going to go diving. I'll be like, awesome. I'm going to grab my passport, yeah, get my swimsuit, we'll yeah. go. Well, uh, not certified, so I'm not sure how deep they will let me go, but... <laughs> yeah, it's a, things like that. Mm, avoid avoid uh, the eels of the, um, and no, the tiger them. and the tiger... Lionfish. Lionfish. Yeah, <laughs> don't touch them. I had to learn that because uh, I, they're, they're, they're poison little needles can still go through your wetsuit. Oh, that's scary. Yeah, yes. My brother got stung by a jellyfish as a kid. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I haven't had any bad encounters. I, although I, I, I was, I almost hit a sea urchin when I was uh, scuba diving once. <laughs> uh, Those are the little spiky things. Yeah, yeah. Did yeah. you have uh, water shoes on? Um, yeah, <laughs> water sh uh, I had uh, flippers. Oh, uh, yeah, fins. Yeah. Fins. Wait, no, yeah. Fins. Fins. Fins, flippers. <laughs> Sometimes things are so simple that you're like, that can't be the name for that thing. It has to be more complicated. <laughs> I, what do I get confused? I always get confused when I'm saying my regulator versus my BC. Regulator is the thing about. Oh, for the, uh, yeah, for the scuba diving. And the BC, buoyancy control device, it's a jacket that you inflate. I'm just not saying that for you, I'm saying it for the people that don't uh, know. Oh, gotcha. BC. <laughs> yeah, I totally, octopus. it was very clear that I totally knew what a BC was. <laughs> like, based on my face, I was like, yep, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Totally following you here. I was like, BC, like, <laughs> what is he talking about? BC, uh, BCD. BC buoyancy control device, which is the <laughs> jacket or jacket that you wear. Yeah, no, I had no idea. It's been a while since I was doing that, so. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, uh, but, uh, uh, so yeah, if I were a really rich man, I do things to my friends and myself, get my few little material things mm -hmm. that I would like. You know. That's cool, so, and to be a rich man and take care of people and travel at a woman's notice. <laughs> travel at a woman's notice, go diving in, uh, where would I like to go, like, uh, Thailand. 
in Thailand. Lots of other recurring detail in comparison. Mm -hmm. That sounds fun. Unless I saw a great white shark, that would freak me the fuck out. Yeah, that would be awful. That would be very awful. Are we winding down since the end? Um, a little bit, yeah. So, it's like, like, I was yeah. gonna ask um, if you had any other dreams for the future, for career-wise, or anything. Or uh, I'm like Bugs Bunny. Mm -hmm. You never know where you're going until you get there. I like that. That's a good. You know, yeah. I came here August 23rd. I thought I'd be gone by September 13th. I didn't know I was doing your pilot reading. Yeah. Pilot reading. So, you know, life happens in the unknown. I, was, I didn't know I was going to be doing Shrink until October 5th, you know. Oh, wow. Huh. I was supposed to be gone October 1st, you know. Mm -hmm. I didn't know I was going to be doing a movie. So life always happens. And things just kind of come, and it's, it's, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. So I try not to stress about, you know, just that or the other. I think that's a good way to look at life. It is a good way to look at life. I mean, I haven't always been like that, you know. Um... Were you more uptight, or...? I was... Yeah, I was more uptight. It was... It was... It was, it was different, you know. Mm -hmm. It never has a different set of circumstances that things happen. Things... Racially, things are different for me. Um, Acting-wise, things are different for me. When I get cast in, you know, if we both went out to L.A., the challenges we would have... We're not going to be going up for the same thing, so... Yeah, that would be really, really blind casting there. Yeah. <laughs> no, like, no, 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 don't just say it now. It's like, I, I would say to you, I probably would say to somebody, well, make sure you have an agent before you go to L.A. Yeah. But your path might be different from mine, mm. you know, so, you know, it's, we wouldn't be... Doing the same thing. You know, if, even if I were a woman, even if I were a white woman, you know, mm. uh... What you're gonna get, the things we get cast for will still be different, so mm -hmm. it's not gonna be the same. But I have a general rules about you know how to deal, yeah. you know, make sure you have an agent before you go out there, and make sure you're still hooked in and doing theater out there because it's not like Chicago or New York where there's a, a lot of theater. You know, you could be you could be doing main stage wherever uh, in Second City or mm -hmm. whatever theater. And you'll be there just flipping the TV like, when are they going to send me something to go on? I've been here for months, months. months. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, I don't know, like I said, it's a, I know that's a tough game and all that. And the audition cycle and all that stuff. Oh, that's tough. You're fine. Yeah. So when you get to the, the Sarah all, it's all Britain. <laughs> all Britain show. Like all British. <laughs> when you get the Sarah all British, all Britain show, um. I want to be on it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have you back. It'll be fun. All right. Um, and um, I was in the podcast by uh, going to sleep. So good night, everybody. Good. Sir. What? <laughs> Sir. Thanks for listening to Sleeping with Sarah, where I slept with Greg Holloman. Be sure to check out Greg's new CISO show, which will be premiering in March of 2017. This podcast is part of the Laugh Factory Podcast Network. Please remember to subscribe and rate and review on iTunes, iHeartRadio, and SoundCloud. This podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Go to audibletrial.com slash sleepingwithsarah. I'm releasing a new podcast each week. Be sure to tune in to find out who I have in bed with me next. Thanks to Josh Bryan for the music. You can be more on sleepingwithsarah.com. And please follow me on Twitter at Sarah Albritton. Until next time, good night. Sleeping with Sarah.